Good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Weaver. I'm a, a shareholder from Bellingham, Washington. Um, you have discussed what a wonderful business is. Um, one of the criteria in your acquisition uh, page 23 of your annual report is management. Could you discuss uh, how you decide what good management is and how you decide whether you have a good manager? The really great business is one that doesn't require good management. I mean, that is, that's a terrific business. And the, the, uh, the poor business is one that can only succeed or even survive with great management. And, uh, uh, but we look, we look for people that know their businesses, love their businesses, love their shareholders, want to treat them as, as, as partners. And, uh, we still look to the underlying business. So we, we, uh, uh, if, if we have somebody that we think is extraordinary, but they're locked into one of those terrible businesses, because we've been in some terrible businesses, and, and you know the best thing you can do probably is get out of it and, and get into something else. But there's an enormous difference, frankly. There's an enormous difference in the talent of American business managers. Uh, the CEOs of the Fortune 500 are not selected like 500 members of the American Olympic track and field team uh, and and it is not the same process and you do not have the uniformity of top quality that you get with the American Olympic team in any sport uh, you do you do not get that in in, in 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 top management in American business you get some very able people some terrific people like a Bill Gates that we just mentioned but you get you get a lot of mediocrity too and uh, uh, the test uh, I think in some cases that it's fairly identifiable uh, who has done an extraordinary job. And we like people that have batted 350 or 360 in terms of predicting that they're going to bat over 300 in the future. And some guy says, you know, I batted 127 last year, but I've got a new bat or a new batting coach, you know, some management consultant has come in and told them how to do it. Supposedly we're very suspicious of that. Uh, so we don't, uh, uh, we don't like uh, banjo hitters. Those, suddenly uh, proclaim that they can uh, become power hitters. And, uh, and then we, we try to figure out what their attitude is towards shareholders. And, and uh, that isn't uniform either uh, throughout corporate America. It's far from uniform. Uh, uh, we still want them to be in a good business, so I would emphasize that. And uh, uh, we feel that, uh, I mean, when I, I, I gave the illustration of, Tom Murphy in the in the annual report. I mean, no one had either the ability, no one could top his ability or or integrity in terms of the way he ran Cap Cities for decades. I mean, and you could you could see it in in fifty different ways. I mean, he was thinking about the shareholders, and he not only thought about them, he knew what to do to forward their interests. And uh, in terms of building the business, he only built it when it made sense, not when it did something for his his ego or, or to make it larger alone. He did it when it was in his shareholders interests. And you know, they, they're, they're not all Tom Murphy's, but when you find them and, the, and they're in a decent business, you want to bet very heavily and not make the same mistake I made by selling out once or twice too. Zone, was that zone three or yeah, zone four. Uh, 